Hello children, so we meet again with another video lesson and I welcome you all to your English class. Now children, for today's English lesson, we are going to continue with the ninth poem that we were reading from your honeysuckle book and we have already finished reading the text. We have known the meaning of the text. We have uh, gone through the explanation of the poem and we had seen how a child actually is fearing what is fearing or having this baseless fears and always is unable to sleep at nights because why because of certain doubts and fears that arises in his or her mind yes so now children in this video lesson we are going to carry on with the question answers that we started uh, in our previous class and i have already finished the first uh, first question yes i have finished answer one and we had three questions in that one so we are on page uh, the questions are on page number 122 now we can carry on with the second question read the following line some what ifs crawled inside my ear. Can words crawl into your ear? This is an image. The poet is trying to make an image of what she hears or experiences. Okay. Now with your partner, try and list out some more images from the poem. Okay. And now because I am your partner here, so I will help you out with it. Now we can go ahead and see here. Now children, uh, when I used this, like when I said crawl into my ears. So crawling is something which is done by whom? Uh, words cannot crawl. Yes, they are like, uh, they are just uh, some imaginary thing. Okay, yes, we know that words are there, but we cannot touch it. We cannot see it. Okay, we cannot, we can just hear it or we can use it. But uh, humans can crawl. So uh, in this way, the narrator is personifying words that they did what they crawled. It is giving an image to show us that what it, uh, what is uh, what are what if questions doing to her. It's getting inside her ears. That means they are whispering to her. They are saying something to her. Now we all think in term of words you know this now let's write this answer also you will find these questions on page number 102 and this is your answer number one sorry two yes now we think in term of words we think in terms of words our mind remains active active the 24 hours yes it doesn't rest it doesn't rest even at night it is crowded with ideas it is crowded with ideas both sweet and bitter sweet and bitter yes in this way words create in this way, words create a picture or scene, creating a picture or scene In 
enters enter one's mind and hears yes children dreams are also action packed scenes dreams are also action packed scenes we talk shout tremble with fear we talk shout tremble with fear and sweat at night yes sir now answer three see children complete this one we think in terms of words our mind remains active all the 24 hours it doesn't rest even at night it is crowded with ideas both sweet and bitter in this way words creating a picture or scene enters one enter one's mind and yours dreams are also action packed scenes we talk shout tremble with fear and sweat at night okay children now let's move ahead with answer 3 In group of four, discuss some more what ifs that you experience in your day-to-day -day life and list them out. Okay. So now let's see. We can at least I can help you write some of it. So answer three. Number one, what can be the thieves and killers? You are thinking all these things. Okay. It might not happen in reality. so the thieves and killers these are what ifs what will happen what if the thieves and killers sometimes force their way into homes number 2 supposing a mechanic supposing strangers knocking pressing the call bell to gain entry yes number 3 beggars and fakirs also frighten me number 4 what will happen if an earthquake quake comes or lightning strikes us
Yes. These are some of the common fears you might have. You can also write your own fears and own experience like with this. Okay. Now write a poem or of five or six lines with the what ifs that you have listed. So you can write uh, five to six lines of poem with the what ifs. Combine all this, you can create a poem or you can write your own poem with what ifs. And like in this poem, we had seen what children, we had seen that the words were rhyming. Uh, let me tell you the rhyme scheme as well. So rhyme scheme of this poem has to be, see, here, ear, long song, school, pool, up, cup, cry, die, test, chest, me, me, taller, smaller. Okay. Then in the next stanza, we had bite, kite, war, divorced. Okay. Late straight pants, now dance. Last portion is not matching. Okay, we do not have a rhyme scheme here. So, yes. Okay, children. Now, see, nothing is matching there. Pants, dance, yes, a little bit of it. Yes. Late straight and white kite. Yes, this type is matching. Okay, rhyming actually. Now, uh, we can move ahead with a new chapter because we have already finished this nothing to do now we can move ahead with the next chapter the banyan tree which is written by ruskin bond okay he is a very famous poet very children friendly like he used to write for children only most of the time actually he used to write uh, for children like horror stories children's stories books stories novels Okay, so now let's move ahead with the banyan tree. Okay, I hope you have seen a banyan tree. It's very gigantic with lots of roots hanging from its branches, which you know are not the ordinary roots. Okay. Now, Ruskin Bond is the writer. Let's see what we have. Now, we will see that the author, that means Ruskin Bond, used to live where was living in his grandparents' house in Dehradun. And now let the story unfold. Let's read it and understand how it takes shape. Okay. The fight of the cobra and mongoose is a classic drama often seen in India. So we are in part one and you will find this chapter on page number 124. The fight of the cobra and the mongoose is a classic drama often seen in India. And the outcome is largely the same. So you know the mongoose uh, kills the snake and all. The mongoose is not immune to the venomous bite but is faster and quicker in motion than the snake. So you know that uh, the snake do possess what? Venom, venomous poison, yes. But uh, actually because the mongoose is quicker in responding, you have read the chapter. I hope you remember that uh, the friendly mongoose you have read. So you might be knowing it already. So how quick it was and how it did kill the snake, the deadly poisonous snake. And the cobra assumes a posture of defense and attempts to reach the animal by a sweeping strike. So when uh, this sight is very common when the mongoose and cobra fight. Okay. And it tries to actually figure out the move of the mongoose. But what happens? It is not able to do it. But the quick moving mongoose jumps out of reach and comes at the snake from another direction because it's very much what? It's very much fast, quick in its action. Now before the snake can get into striking position again, this constant movement tires and discourages the snake. And the mongoose is finally able to leap in close and bury its teeth in the snake's neck, usually severing the joints of its vertebrae. So children, vertebrae is usually vertebrae animals, vertebrates, you have, you might know it, 
Vertebrates are those animals which have what? Which have spines. Yes, they have backbone. So what happens when it goes back again to its striking position? Uh, it's uh, the mongoose is very much swift, and it does what? It comes from other. It comes from the other direction and does what? And actually bites and actually uh, pierces its teeth where into the neck actually into the vertebrae of the snake okay now uh, let's start this do the house and grounds belonged to my grandfather the magnificent old banyan tree was mine chiefly because grandfather at 65 could no longer climb it so what does the author say what is uh, what is the writer saying that the whole house okay the ground the house belonged to whom belonged to his grandfather grandparents actually grandfather and grandmother but that magnificent old banyan tree burger kapir you might have heard about it you might have seen it as well so that huge tree was whose was the writer's yes was his one he called the banyan tree to be his property okay chiefly why 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 did he say so because grandfather was old now and he could not climb it any more yes its spreading branches which hung to the ground and took root again forming a number of twisting passages gave me endless pleasure you know children, uh, I was telling you about the roots. Yes, I was telling you about their uh, roots which used to, which hang from what? Which hang from the branches. And again, what happens? They are so strong. They again, because you know, with so uh, such a huge tree, it needs what? It needs a good support from the ground. And a single trunk won't be enough to keep that uh, huge, magnificent tree uh, from falling yes so it needs what it needs a good support so all the roots the hanging roots actually what does it do it again comes to the ground and takes the support means it get inside the soil and it will again uh, keep the tree straight okay so when it was done when this thing went into the soil again so it formed a passage, a line of passage through which the writer enjoyed moving, okay? Passage means ways, okay? He used to come out from one and exit from other. So he used to enjoy this game. He loved moving around the banyan tree, okay? Now, among them were squirrels and snails and butterflies. So which animals were there? Squirrels were there, then they had snails and butterflies as well. The tree was older than the house. Yes, obviously children, uh, you know that sometimes uh, you plant trees and sometimes the trees are already there. They are like growing when you are constructing your home or houses. The tree was older than the house, older than grandfather, as old as the Dehradun itself. I could hide myself in its branches behind thick green leaves and spy on the world below. So because it was so bushy, it was so thick, it was so dense that what did he feel? That it was so old that he could just go on top, or he could go and sit on one of the branches and hid himself inside those green leaves, large green leaves and he could spy, he can do his jasus, he can just spy around the world okay now moving ahead my first friend was a small gray squirrel yes arching his back and sniffing into the air he seemed at first to resent my invasion of his privacy so children actually we can continue with this one uh, in the next video lesson because it will take time for me to make you understand this privacy, invention, all those terms which you might have already heard in your SST classes when uh, like during wars or maybe some one invading. Okay, so we can carry on with this part in your next video lesson. Till then children, please take care of yourself and your family. Bye-bye for this day.